Hi Hires, so we are still on DNA in the genome, but we're looking at how personal genomics can be linked to our health. So the big question is, where could this actually go? And this is a huge ethical, moral, just scientific question, because we have the entire human genome sequenced. The next step of that logically is to say, OK, where is the variation? Where is the differences? And what do they actually mean to the people who have them? So after the Human Genome Project, we had the 1000 Genome Project. So what we were looking for was to find across 1000 samples of the human genome, sample everything about it, and then look to find out what is the variation of particular alleles in every locus they could find, and what was the frequency? How often did you have these particular alleles? Now, what is amazing is that it only took four years to do over a thousand because they actually published it with a thousand and ninety two. So what they've now done is launch the 100,000 Genome Project. And this is doing the same, pretty much the same thing, but this time looking very much focused on disease variants. So the idea is if you know what you can look for, because you've looked at different people, you've found people who have specific, specific alleles, and those alleles are linked to a particular disease, then you can now look for it. You can use gene probes for it. You can test for it to see what risk people actually have. This is huge. And there are, as I say, lots of moral and ethical questions involved as well with what we should be doing with this data. The next level of this is personal genomics. So actually looking at people's DNA to decide if there is a risk attached to what their DNA is. So you may have already heard of some of them. There are certain genes we know absolutely are linked to particular issues. So the BRCA genes are really quite well characterised now and very strongly linked to increased risk of breast cancer to the point where if you test positive for this gene, you may be making decisions about whether to have elective surgery to remove the chance then of developing breast cancer in the future. It isn't foolproof because you still have the issue of particular variants of the BRCA gene which have not been recorded as this is an issue, so therefore you're not looking for it. And it doesn't tell you everything, not everyone who develops breast cancer is linked to the BRCA gene. Um, I personally have had this tested because of uh, family history and also because I have um, been through breast cancer. I don't have the BRCA gene, but given the number of people in my family who have had can breast cancer as well, it's still considered I have a genetic risk, but they don't know which one it is. They just know it's not BRCA. But ultimately, if you get more data, then potentially you could be able to track it down and say, oh no, this is what your risk is. And if you have this, then you have the potential to prevent disease. And you also have the potential to tailor medicines. And that's really important as well. If you know exactly how people are going to react to particular medicines because of their, their genetics, then you can decide what medicines are best for them. So the next level of that is not looking just at the risk of developing a disease, but then how your body responds to drugs. Now that's because a lot of drug action is determined by your cell's metabolism. Your cell metabolism is determined by proteins and enzymes that are coded for in your genes. So if you can find those, if you can actually work out a profile that says whether someone is going to be very susceptible to a particular drug or they're going to be very resistant to it, how much of a response they're going to get, you can tailor that information into which ones are going to work and how much you give. And the dosage is really important and something that we are now looking at a lot more carefully. What we've done in the past and has been a big part of, of just any kind of pharmacology is to take Field, take up clinical trials, take people to those and take an average in terms of what dosage works best. And that's great, except it's an average. And so that means that some people will be taking a drug at a dosage which really is too high for what they need. And you have other people who are taking a drug at a dosage which is not actually impacting on them because their metabolism is not allowing it to, to function. So taking all of that together, the potential is huge but there are definitely inherent risks in having this amount of data and this type of data in terms of your DNA sequence.